I'm taking off this feature that uh, basically just heats up the side walls. Uh, well, it just keeps the temperature circulating in there until it's fully um, heated all around. Um, I've got pretty good temperature readings everywhere. I'm trying a new one today. I'm also trying a new ratio, 50-50, based on what we've been learning uh, of the oven. Uh, I don't know if that's where we're gonna land, but uh, we just noticed that the top was actually baking a little faster than the bottom and kind of bottom sides at when we were at the 55-45 setting. And so we're trying something new and seeing what ultimately works for us. Uh, I need another tool. So one of those carts for these things would be useful. My goal is to kind of get through this whole task as efficiently as possible. We're not doing any kind of ornamental scoring on these sliced sourdoughs, um, mainly because they get sliced and bagged. So the ornamental scoring, uh, is not enjoyed in the same way. It just carries less value. We're investing that extra energy in you know, baking these slightly earlier so that they can cool down enough to run through the slicer and spending the extra energy on the, on the packaging there. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, so just grabbing the last three trays of bread that I wanted. And the bread was here, and now it's not. Just set it there for a minute. Check out this custom proof wire monkey lom. Uh, these will soon be available to order uh, directly from our website. We gotta get a little bit better with the shipping thing. Um, I've had other priorities lately, but uh, Tyler, uh, owner of Wire Monkey, made these for us. He's an awesome guy. Uh, he's got some other awesome loms on there that you uh, can just purchase directly from him. Uh, I think they are kind of like an industry standard for scoring. So they feel great. So we're doing 12 loaf sides. That's what we've determined works really well. We notice that we don't like the bread all the way on this angled piece. It's harder to pick up later on. And if you get it too far back, then it's no longer on the stone. So I think that's good. I also have to decide what order I want to work in. Uh, I'm going to work from bottom up. Uh, it'll give me a little time to adjust. I feel like the hardest unloads are at the top because you can, you're working over your head. Just check my steam settings really quick. Seven seconds, that's what I want. Seven. It's meant to be pretty gentle, which honestly takes a little getting used to The dampers are closed on that side. Going back to working position. I just made a really big mistake. I didn't score those loaves. <laughs> I don't know if I can recover that, to be honest. I'm not gonna be able to pull them back out just gonna have to deal with it at this point. I guess we're gonna get a nice case study on why you score loaves. Uh, geez. It's gonna go right next door. It'll be very evident to the whole world the difference between scored and unscored loaves. So now we have an experiment in the making.
unfortunately there's a lot of bread to make. So I'm not gonna cry over the 12 loaves. I'm just gonna say that's a learning curve on my third time operating the seven. Give myself a little bit of grace. See that bread's really quite wet in there. It tells me that seven seconds of steam is overkill. And not necessarily good for the way that the steam function works where there's a fixed amount of steam available to inject per certain amount of time. So it has to reboil while it's baking. Uh, it's not like sitting idle. So now I'm gonna add steam again. And this time there's not gonna be actual steam as much actual steam left. So by the time I get to the end, it's like dispensing water, which is why it's coming out the oven. So I'm gonna set the timer, but I'm also gonna adjust the steam settings here. So we're gonna go down to four, I think, and see how that plays. So this oven has a slightly different action than the ones that we've used where it's almost like having two ovens in a single deck, but they still operate as a single deck. So they're on a single set of timers. The thing that it is designed to do is steam both halves. And so that's one of the reasons why I made that adjustment to the steam count is I'm trying to get enough steam in the tank to steam both sides of the oven because it basically has a regeneration cycle of 20, 30 minutes. So um, in, in this case, like the deck before, I had seven seconds of steam configured and it was great for the first half. But then when I got to that seven seconds of the second half, it started dumping water at the end, which gives me an indica indicator that it had exhausted all the steam available uh, and was now on just running water. Uh, steam has to be created in heat, uh, and so that's kind of a good example of that. My steam function is gonna be different. Four seconds. See, that's still plenty. You know, like Logan was saying, so much steam came out of the oven. Well, it doesn't do us any good out of the oven. So had I timed this correctly, or I suppose had I achieved what I did on the top three and the bottom two, just that we would have already been loading, we would have already been two decks in. Instead, we're just kind of waiting around. This is actually the really tricky part to this whole oven is unloading. So you do it wrong. I mean, this integrated loader is awesome, but if you do it wrong, you're gonna end up with a peel and the peel's not very comfortable in this oven. It's very big. In this way, I'm definitely going to work on the halves right now. And I'm gonna look at the loaves and unload them when I think they look perfect. I'm not going to rush it. If they need a minute or two longer, I'm gonna let them have it. And I have the visual to kind of help. Okay. First one is a success. They all came out. Despite the longer than normal bake, we're not burning the bottoms, which is something to be careful of. It kind of gives me an indicator that I should look at that bottom deck, which has been in there even longer. I mean, these are my messed up ones anyway, so might as well take them out now. This is why you score bread. There's probably a big hole here, maybe. We're gonna have to check all of these. We are slicing them, so maybe they'll be able to just be sold at a discount or something, but. So I'm going to that one. Just seems the most ready.
This one I timed pretty well, I think. So we were playing with steam settings. This uh, set of bread that's coming out of this oven baked significantly faster because I reduced the uh, amount of time that it was steaming uh, from seven seconds per half to four. Seven seconds proved to be overkill for a number of reasons. One, it trapped too much moisture in the oven and thus uh, slowed down the bake, uh, sort of pushing up against the, the coloring on the loaves where the bottoms were getting a little darker than I want because of just the length of the bake. Um, they also have, you can tell those loaves are just going to be a little bit chewier because the water just created a chewier crust. You can just see the difference in the sheen. They're shinier. Um, it's not that these top ones aren't shiny. They have a nice shine to them that steam provides, uh, but not too much. Uh, so basically, the steam really is a good developer of the crust. And when you have as precise of control as this oven allows, you can really kind of play around with with how you do that crust development. Um, we have a lot of learning to do to kind of adjust to the tool that we have. But I'm pretty happy overall for our first couple bakes. I wonder if I can recover it. So I think another symptom of this much steam is that the loaves just kind of stick to the bottom more. This is where I got trapped. Grab my giant peel. Just gotta kinda make it work for now. Final three loaves being a little pesky back there. Got a lot better as I went with this first round of baking. I'm excited about this second round that's coming forward. Had I done a perfect job, I would have had an oven fully loaded by now. And instead I have kind of an empty oven, but that's okay. We're in our learning phase in this new facility and we gotta give our chance to learn, give ourselves a chance to learn this new equipment, learn the new parameters. While it's not so wildly different that we can't produce bread uh, to sell, it is different enough that we have to think on our toes right now and evaluate things that we thought we had kind of locked down um, with our previous experience. So if you followed along during this uh, bakery's construction online, uh, you might have noticed that the floor here was covered in bags of insulation. There was like, it's like a hundred bags of insulation for this oven and the other. Big bags, like this tall. Uh, this oven is extremely well insulated between each deck, on the walls of the oven, on the top. Uh, as a result, you know that moisture is being trapped in the decks a little bit better. Uh, the ovens that we've used in the past are, are awesome ovens in their own right, but they're certainly not as, not as insulated. They just simply don't have as much insulation. So I think in that way, uh, the water finds, the steam finds ways to escape. Uh, and so that's part of the reason, just part of the reason why we're seeing just a different performance with the steam in this oven and having to adjust to it. I picked a little bit of a darker sample here to cut open just to take a look at the crumb. I personally love bread like this, so I'll gladly have some. Just trying to see what it's like. It's very fresh bread, but Pretty happy with that crumb structure overall. Still definitely on the extremely fresh to cut side. 
uh, but wanted to go ahead and see where we landed. Second round is about to come out of the oven. Three minutes, we're going to start unloading all the all the decks. Sourdough will be a wrap for the sliced loaves. We still have whole loaves to bake later on. Uh, since they don't get sliced, we bake them really as close to the time of departure as possible. The sliced ones we uh, can't do that with. We have to let them cool all the way down so they pass through the slicer. Uh, but let's go ahead and give this uh, bread a go. Hard to be upset about that. It's very good. We can also, while we're at it, cut one of the ones I didn't score. So we got pretty lucky. Crumb structure's intact. We can probably slice these, mark them down by a dollar or two, and call that a day.